Hello, and thank you for joining the session. Uh, today we're going to keep looking at a project called Stalker. And the technology behind this project is going to be using event sourcing, uh, using the Laravel framework, and using event sauce to provide the actual event sourcing layer. Um, in the previous episode, uh, we talked a little bit about the goals, um, and we also created a Laravel project, and we brought event sauce in. Um, after the episode, I published the code to GitHub. So if anyone wants to follow along, you can see exactly uh, the code that's already been there. Um, might not be super good at atomic commits, uh, so we'll have to uh, try that. But uh, feel free to follow along and you should be able to see most of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about here. Um, let's hop into the code real quick and just sort of get a refresher on where we're at. Um, we do have an event sauce catalog. This is implementing our uh, basic catalog interface. And what the catalog interface is going to do is allow us to find and save items. Uh, to actually do that work, we're going to use an event uh, aggregate root repository, which is actually a event sauce package. So here we have it right here. And um, it's going to be called the event sauce catalog so that we're, we know exactly what we're getting. Um, and so it's just going to be passed in any aggregate root repository. And we don't actually have one in place just yet. So if we look at what we had earlier, we had the app service provider. Um, anytime the application is looking for a catalog uh, interface, it's going to be given the event sauce catalog. Um, and then we configured the container that anytime um, when the event sauce catalog wants an aggregate root repository, we actually did a function call here. So we had a little uh, factory method to generate the in-memory method repository um, and use the constructing aggregate root repository as uh, a way to actually do this. Originally, I wanted to extend construct, uh, constructing aggregate root repository, uh, but it's marked as final. So I wasn't able to do that. So that's kind of why we have this uh, weird little thing here. So ideally, what we need to do is come up with a actual uh, message repository implementation, something other than just uh, for memory. So what we're going to do is take a look at the doctrine implementation that uh, EventSauce actually has put together. So if we look at the doctrine message repository, uh, we're just going to take a, a couple of seconds to look at the code and see how it actually works. So um, there's not a lot of documentation here. Um, as I understand it, this, this is an implementation that is officially supported by the event sauce team. But uh, once we start looking at it, um, we'll see that there's some drawbacks to it. Uh, if you want to call them drawbacks, not everyone will. Um, and it's very uh, easy to create one of these. So um, there's been a lot of, I think, issues on it, asking people to do things, uh, mapping more flexible, um, <coughs> where um, it sort of makes sense to do these things. But, um, you know, Frank's view on this has been uh, essentially this. Uh, the interface is so small um, that it makes sense to just make your own implementation. So and we're going to take a look at that now and see how true that is. So if we go into source, um, there's only three classes here. Um, these two are really funny. <laughs> uh, if you look at the, the comment that went with it, just use one class. Uh, we can see that both, both the Postgres and the um, MySQL just extend the doctrine message repository. There isn't an actual repository specific to um, each of these different databases. So um, what we're going to need to do is look at the core package here. And here we see doctrine message repository. Um, it's going to use a doctrine connection. Uh, it's going to use a message serializer. This is something that uh, we might want to take a look at at some point. There's a table name and JSON and code options. Um, let's see. So the implementations for the uh, method repository have persist, and persist takes a list of messages. Uh, so these messages will represent the events that are being stored, um, and then it generates a fancy SQL query to do everything, I believe, in one, uh, it's not even one commit. 
it's one actual SQL query. Um, I was a little confused looking at the implementation at first because I was like, why why are there going to be event table name or column names that have indexes in them? Didn't really make sense to me. Uh, but I don't think that's actually what's going on here. Uh, we could probably do something to dump the actual SQL query that's being built. Uh, but I think it is doing, let's see, where is it at? Yeah, so it's doing values. Uh, so I think it's doing multiple values, which I haven't actually done before in SQL Query. Uh, so Jonathan Jeffries on uh, YouTube asked if message serializer is a part of event sauce, and I believe it is, um, which we just haven't touched on yet. So we're going to use whatever they're using. Yeah, so there's a event sourcing serialization message serializer. So we are going to be taking a look at that. Um, I'm probably just going to use their implementation out of the box. Um, and then see if there's something more that we want to do with it after that. <coughs> um, so that's actually happening where? So it's using JSON encoding the payload. Uh, where was it? Ah, here, right at the top. So the payload gets serialized using the uh, serializer. Um, Ultimately, you end up with uh, the SQL uh, joining all of the different values by comma. So again, I think this is going to be one long insert statement <clears throat> and um, begins a transaction, prepares it, executes it, and then commits it. So this is, there are a lot of ways we could probably do this. I probably wouldn't have bothered trying to do this all in one SQL query, uh, but I do like the fact that that is what's going on here. So I think we'll probably keep that going forward. Um, the things of note though, if we look at the actual columns that are being created here, we have the event ID, we have the event type, we have the aggregate root ID, <coughs> um, the time of recording column and the payload column. Now there's one of these values in here that we don't get access to. And I need to double check to see which one it is, but essentially the, the ID are the, uh, the messages, messages themselves have a notion of um, a version of the event um, on the aggregate root. So if an aggregate root already has three versions um, and you try to commit version three with the different event, it sh uh, well, I'm going to say it should fail. Um, but that's not necessarily everybody's opinion. And that's why one of the things that I want to change on this is that I want that to fail. So I want the, the database to actually say, hey, wait, no, uh, void this whole transaction because uh, somebody um, is trying to commit over uh, the aggregate root when it was in a different state than it was uh, when it was initially created. So that's one of the things we're going to have to add on here, uh, which means we're going to have to figure out what these headers are. Um, so let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Uh, so if we go to header, um, hmm, I wonder if I can actually get in there. Uh, event sauce header. There we go. <clears throat> so event ID, event type, uh, aggregate root version. So this is the header. Um, uh, this is the actual header that gets added for the aggregate root version, but as we can see, um, I don't believe we're actually doing anything with it in here. Uh, Jonathan Jeffries is mentioning that it doesn't look like we're using much of doctrine. Um, that is true. <coughs> um, we're, we can look at the rest of this, of this to see if there's anything else that's doctrine-y. Um, it looks like we're using the query builder here a little bit. Uh, but it's not using a lot of doctrine. And I actually toyed around with the idea of just using the Laravel uh, DB classes since that's what we'll have access to. So it's possible we won't actually uh, bring doctrine in at all. Um, I can't remember if Laravel actually uses doctrine behind the scenes. I think it does in some cases. Uh, Laravel use doctrine. <clears throat> does not use doctrine. Uh, uh, all right. Um, I, I feel like there was something that required it. I think it's something with the um, migrations or something along those lines um, that required uh, the doctrine, um, some part of doctrine. Uh, but we might be able to get away with this. So that's a great question, Jonathan. Um, 
or great comment. Um, we may not actually use doctrine for this. Uh, it depends on how complicated that would be. It might be easier just to, to do it this way to start with, but also since it is so straightforward, um, it might make sense to just use um, Laravel's built-in DB commands to do some of this. Uh, base SQL, so this is where um, we're creating the inserts. So uh, we have uh, event ID type, and again, there is no aggregate. Ah, you know what? I don't think there's an aggregate root type either. That was the other thing I wanted. Uh, aggregate root ID type. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder what that value is. We're going to have to look into that. Uh, one of the things that I don't see here is this notion of uh, which aggregate type it is. Hey, Frank. Uh, Frank, the author of Event Sauce, looks like he's joining from the Astrocast site. Thanks for joining. Um, are any of these headers representing the aggregate root type? So I see aggregate root ID type. You're exactly the person that should be on chat right now. That's awesome. Uh, that's the class name for serialization. Okay, so uh, aggregate root ID type. So if I have an aggregate root named item. Oh, so that's the class name for the serialization of the ID type. So it, is that going to be um, stalker model catalog item? Or is it going to be stalker model catalog item ID? Which class name would, would end up in there? Um, item ID, OK. So um, one of the things I uh, one of the things that I wanted to take a look at here um, was whether or not there's a way to say get all of the events for the item class. Um, it looks like I can do that for a specific aggregate. Uh, so for example, or for a specific aggregate root instance. So if I know the item ID, I can get a specific items events. I'm wondering if I can get all of the events of all of the items. Um, I guess I could probably do a query against the item ID. Um, just, I'm not sure that I, I would like that as much. Um, Anyway, uh, I can take a look at that as we go. So we have the base SQL. Um, it looks like there's support for different table names. Um, I'm, I'm suspecting that the use case for this is actually to put all of the events for, say, item um, in its own table that has all of the messages for items. So then you're, you're not actually creating like a uh, global event store for all of everything within the same table. Um, which I think is, gr I know that I, that would make certain things easier because uh, you would never have to query for events by a specific type. Uh, where it becomes a little more complicated is if you have uh, queries, say you have a projection that is relying on messages from multiple types of objects or multiple event, uh, multiple aggregate routes. Um, being able to get them when they're already interleaved the way they're supposed to be um, is easy um, if it's all in one table. If they're going to be in different tables, um, then you have to get, say, 20 at a time from each, um, and then for each one, check to make sure that timing and order and everything. So that that's going to make things a little more complicated for me. Um, so I may end up trying to get this all in one uh one events table uh, rather than say like item events. So I don't, I don't know if I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be or if anyone is able to follow this, but um, the fact that this is an arbitrary table name, I think that's probably what this was intended to be used as. Um, retrieve all. So this is where you can get the uh, aggregate root um, based on the ID that you're passed in. So we'll be passing in item ID in this case. Uh, what it will do then is uh, create a query builder. Um, it's only going to get the payload from table name. It's going to get the aggregate root ID, <coughs> um, time of recording, um, and then aggregate root ID. So, um, or it's going to pass in the ID, and then it's going to use this uh, serializer to unserialize the payload. 
Uh, so this should be all straight ahead. Uh, the, again, the only thing that I'm not sure about is whether I'm going to add an additional method here uh, that, that won't be used by event sauce necessarily, but it might be used by um, projection system I'm hoping to build where I can do retrieve all for item um, and then it'll give me all of the, the items um, or be able to specify retrieve for all um, and then specify uh, item and inventory, for example. So that would give me all of the events related to either the inventory aggregate route um, or the uh, item aggregate routes. Uh, retrieve everything. Um, so this, I think, retrieve all for a specific ID uh, versus retrieve everything for um, everything. So I think that should be, this should be pretty straight ahead. So I think I'm going to just run with it as is. Uh, Jonathan mentioned trying to not maybe have to use doctrines. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try that actually, not using doctrines. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, I need to do some thinking here. So app stuff, not worried about just yet. Model, let's do, let's do a top level event sauce directory. And let's see, this was under, <clears throat> uh, just follow the event sauce naming structure here. So we'll do, And then uh, we'll do uh, DB message repository. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to implement message repository. And now we've got to implement some things. All right, so <clears throat> Since we're using Laravel, there are tons of ways that we could do this. Um, there's some ways that are, are the quote unquote right way. Um, and then there's the way that we're going to do it, <laughs> which I don't think is going to make necessarily everybody happy. Um, but this isn't necessarily about being happy. All right. So let's go back here. Um, let's bring in the dependencies. Uh, JSON and code options. Is that being used? I didn't think it was actually, oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so the encode option's being used. I thought I saw zero being passed in somewhere. Where did I see that? <clears throat> oh, it's just the default. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do, I'll dump them all in the same table. Uh, we aren't going to do table name, uh, method serializer. So we're probably going to have to do something similar to what we did with the provider, um, or, uh, in the app provider, where we created our in-memory message repository. We're going to have to do the same thing with the serializer here. Uh, probably just bind the default implementation. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is one. Um, let's see. I can do this right. Implement methods. Uh, initialize fields. All right. So I got some help on that since the last episode, which makes me happy. Um, I don't like that it didn't set this up for me, though. It's kind of annoying. I'm in sore need of um, upping my PHP Storm game. All right, so got all of this, which is good. So persisting the messages, let's see. <clears throat> the other thing we're going to need here is um, an actual database. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and create a migration. Um, let's see here. And partisan make migration. 
don't remember the commands here. So let's do name of the migration. All right, so this is where I'm not really sure um, if I'm going to get this right. But let's do create uh, events table. Ah, I did it right. All right, cool. I remembered. Um, oh, crashed messenger. I thought maybe that was the case. Uh, PS restart. There we go. Let's see if that fixes it. <coughs> Chat got really quiet all of a sudden, and I think that was because some messages were not being uh, picked up by the queue. Um, there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, you just add another method on your own implementation. Awesome. Um, so Jonathan Jeffries had also asked, uh, should an event stream be per bounded context? Um, that's a good question. I think that uh, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people just have, uh, you have to describe it as a data lake uh, where all of the events are in the same place so that everybody has access to them. Um, so I think that kind of comes down to taste. Um, uh, Frank said, for projections, you'd listen to all the events. That's what the dispatcher is for. When you see a dispatcher like Kafka-based, this will all be pretty simple. All right. Um, <laughs> looks like Frank was trying to figure out why his chat messages weren't going. Um, yeah, it should be working now um, if people are uh, dumping stuff into chat. All right, so we have a migration. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, Create events. All right. So, uh, so the thing that Frank is talking about that makes sense. Um, the 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 problem, if it is a problem, um, that I'd like to try to solve. And this is a problem that I haven't ever actually gotten to the point of being able to implement it yet. Um, is on rebuilding projections rather than um, just dumping everything back out, um, <coughs> uh, doing essentially what you're saying. So um, replay the projections, uh, keep track of the offset on the consumers. Um, and that means that, so if you stop a consumer and you start it up again, it picks it up. Um, the, that works great if you're only getting the events, if the projection only has one event store that it's looking at. If it's looking at multiple event stores, uh, interleaving those events, I'm not sure how that would work, if that makes sense. Um, because if you have the events coming in from, say, uh, inventory, um, and you process all of those, and meanwhile, the, the actual uh, catalog hasn't been sending you any events, that doesn't necessarily make make sense, um, especially if you're on, on a rebuild. So you'd still have to bring them in sort of, uh, sort of relative, the event should come in relative to uh, when they originally came in um, to each other in terms of order. Uh, you can do a better job of making sure that happens if all of the events, all of the events are coming from the same data store. Um, and I, maybe I'm totally missing uh, the point on that, but that's kind of, um, I'm not sure how you would do that if you were actually uh, keeping track of the offset for say two different event stores or bringing them in um, on, in like a rebuild scenario. If one has uh, say only 50 events in it total and they only have one every month, say for like four years, and the other event store has like 50 a day for five years. Um, like you would, you would consume all of the events for the first one right away. Um, and you wouldn't be able, to, um, you wouldn't be able to rely on like order of delivery uh, for the projections. And I know you can't really anyway, uh, but if you can, if they all came from the same data store, even if they come um, closer together than they did originally on a replay, uh, they should come in the same order that they actually uh, came in, uh, regardless of which uh, which aggregate route it is, um, as opposed to 
um, all of the catalog aggregate root stuff coming in versus all of the inventory. I don't know. Um, I might be making it too complicated. Uh, totally willing to uh, assume that's the case. All right, cool. Messenger looks stable now. Okay, so let's see. Um, I want to say... Um, is there a boot? Let's see. Ah, here's the schema. Let's see here. Let's see if I can just dump this. <clears throat> um, domain messages. Let's, let's actually call it that instead. So I should have looked at that earlier. Um, create... It, not because we have to uh, do it the way that Frank did it. Um, so Jonathan asks if that happens more than one data store. Um, that I think is the intended way that the, um, from everything I can see from the outside, and it, I, I didn't hear Frank say otherwise, um, it looks like that's the case with the doctrine message repository implementation. The expectation is that you'll create domain message, you'll create a table to house the domain messages or events on an aggregate root by aggregate root, aggregate root by aggregate root basis. Um, so if we look at, well, I guess maybe that isn't even, that's how I would have looked at it. And I think that's one way you could actually use this. Um, but the other thing is that if you have one event store, um, you don't really need to know the types if you're only ever accessing things by IDs. So um, if you enter a new event here, all you need to know is the aggregate root ID. If we're assuming that's going to be a UUID, it doesn't matter if it's an item or an image or a inventory um, journal entry. It doesn't matter because they're all going to have um, they're all going to have uh, unique aggregate root IDs. So the fact that an individual event is a certain of a certain uh, aggregate root doesn't matter. Um, but in some of the stuff that I've worked with in the past, um, it's been nice to be able to um, pull out a stream of events um, that are all related um, in a certain way. So you could just say, I want to get everything of um, a certain type. So if I know that there's six event types for the uh, catalog aggregate route, I could just query for those six types. And then I would know that I'm getting all of the events uh, for those six types of messages. Um, and that's, that's fine, um, but it may be more efficient or more useful or convenient if you could just say, give me all of the item events um, or all of the item aggregate route events. Uh, by specifying the, the type of the aggregate root. Um, so anyway, that, that's kind of the, the question that, that I'm looking at with this, is trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with where we're going right now. Uh, or let's get rid of the events. Uh, I take it back. Let's stay, stick with events. That's the fun thing about doing this on the flies. You only have a short period of time to change your mind, and you also only have a short period of time to actually think about this stuff. <clears throat> um, all right, so I actually want to use Postgres for this. So let's see, Postgres schema. Um, so I think I can just use raw SQL in here. Create table events. Um, Schema raw? No. This raw. <clears throat> okay. 
Hmm. Mirabelle, migrations, raw. So I think this might be the easiest way to do this. Uh, uh, huh. Maybe there isn't. All right. Well, let's do it the more typical Laravel way then. We'll just use this as a template. So let's copy this. <clears throat> So we aren't, <coughs> you know, I might actually leave this incrementing ID. Um, we might use it uh, because I think it's going to be separate. This is actually going to be, um, this could actually be useful for other reasons. Let's get rid of timestamps. So let's do table uh, UUID. Event ID. Um, string event type. So this is going to be the class name of the message. <coughs> um, table. Uh, oh, now this is going to be a UUID aggregate root ID and the aggregate root ID type is going to be a string and none of these are going to be um, nullable uh, table uh, <coughs> recorded at uh, time zone with, hmm, <coughs> actually this needs to be timestamp. All right, timestamp, time zone, uh, payload. So now we need to create some additional things if I want them because I'm the way I am. Um, let's go ahead and do aggregate root type. So we use this. Uh, aggregate root. Um, this will be There we go. Just so that we have a, a an idea when we come back here later. Um, it looks like that's all it needs. Um, event type. Ah. <clears throat> um, we did want the aggregate root version. Uh, is that an integer? Let's assume it is. Uh, let's do a big integer just in case, and we'll do aggregate root version. And <clears throat> let's see what we need down here. Table. Uh, let's create an index. So we'll do a unique index on aggregate root version um, with aggregate root ID. So this is where we will have our optimistic concurrency in place. Um, if somebody tries to um, add a new event uh, with a version, say, 3 for an aggregate root ID that already has a version 3, uh, the new one won't be able to save. Um, now, again, uh, Frank left this um, optional. Uh, because there are use cases where you might not actually want to block this. Um, you might want to have some way to recover from it, for example. 
Um, but for our, most of my purposes, I'm totally fine just saying that's wrong. Um, and that's not the expectation. So for this specific implementation, this is what we're going to do. Uh, aggregate root ID. All right, so this should ensure that um, we have optimistic concurrency. Uh, let's see here. So I do have a couple of notes uh, that I've written down for what I actually what I eventually want for the projection system. Uh, I just want to make sure that I have all of the columns that I needed. Um, so the criteria would be stream ID. So we do have that category. Um, it's going to be aggregate root type. Uh, ID, <coughs> uh, stream version, stream, ah, partitions. Mm. I don't think partitions come into play here. Uh, event type and event ID. So we have event type and event ID. Um, so yeah, the, the criteria that I want to be able to build, so I want to be able to build the criteria to say these are the things that make up um, a projection. Um, so these are the components that I need. Um, there is going to be a uh, partition on the criteria, um, but I don't think that's something that we worry about at the event store level. That's something that would matter um, for other parts of the system. Um, stream version. Uh, this is aggregate root version. <clears throat> okay, so I think we have most of that. Um, Most of that should be covered in here, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to remove this, um, and hmm. I need to create a new uh, database for this. So let's do server settings. <sighs> create stalker <clears throat> All right. let's use the same information we had before Postgres. Oh. Okay. And then root. All right, artisan. Database Postgres, all right. Hmm. PG SQL, there we go. <clears throat> There's one thing that Hmm. 
Oh, that was still my sequel. Hmm. Uh, I was just going to say that hooking up Postgres was a lot easier than with Symfony. Um, I take that back a little bit now. Oh, come on. Root does not exist. Right. Um... Postgres is the user. All right. Ah, awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> as far as I can tell, that means we have um, our tables. So let's go ahead and see if we can prove that. Uh, Docker, public tables. So we have an events table, which has nothing in it, which is totally fine. All right, so let's see if we can get this wired up um, and, and at least test it out. So the thing that we had set up last time was an artisan command called wiring. Um, and what wiring does is just try to instantiate an instance of our catalog. Um, so we know that anywhere in our app that asks for a catalog, it can at least get a catalog. So it's not actually doing anything yet, uh, which is totally fine. Um, uh, but we know at least it's wired up correctly. So let's go back here. So rather than going through this whole nonsense, um, what we're going to do is when we need an aggregate root repository, we're still going to uh, need to do this, but um, message repository here is something that we can get from the container. So let's do container. Let's we get that in here. Um, and then we'll just replace this with container get. Uh, and then we'll do DB uh, message repository. Hmm. So it is what it was called, right? Source event sauce. Um. <laughs> Did I lose what we were working on? Event sauce catalog. I could swear, <laughs> um, I could swear we'd started this, um, but I don't see it here anywhere. That service provider, wiring. Did anyone see me delete that file? <laughs> because I don't remember deleting it, but I very distinctly remember starting it. Let's see, maybe PHP Storm has just crept out again because that's what it did on the last session. It started to do really weird things. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, it says it's there. I wonder how it got deleted. All right, it doesn't matter. And there it is. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, apologies for that. Uh, looks like we've lost some 
of what we started. Uh, DB message repository. Let methods. looked like before. Message serializer, that's what it is. Uh, what was the other thing we needed? JSON and code options just so that they're there <clears throat> since uh, the original author thought they needed to be there. Let's just go ahead and keep them there. JSON option equals zero. Okay. Um, I think that's all the further we actually got in here anyway. So let's see if we can go back to app service provider, DB message repository. All right, so let's see if this works now. If our wiring command still works. All right, so entry not found, exception. Um, get, uh, I wonder if I have to do make. <clears throat> there we go, target concrete is not instantiable. All right, so it's so looking for message serializer um, which doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and look to see um, which implementations event sauce ships with. So let's go here. Uh, constructing. Uh, Serializer test. Okay. <coughs> So this, hmm, class name inflector, is that an imp, uh, where's that coming from? Event sourcing. Is this an interface? It is. Hmm. <coughs> All right. Well, it's still going to be okay. So let's go ahead and use that. So let's go back to the docs. Um, so I think that probably talks about it a little bit. So bootstrap, configure persistence. Um, constructing. Some consumers. All right, well, let's do serialization, constructing message serializer. So see what this does. So serialize, uh, aggregate root ID, aggregate root ID type, headers, payload, let's serialize. Okay. So um, we're going to do like we did last time and try to see how quickly we can do this just to get these uh, connected. So we're going to do app um, bind. So anytime something is looking for a serializer, so message serializer. We're going to use the constructing message serializer. A 
and that should get us to the next error. <coughs> ah, or not. Okay. I guess that uh, was all we needed to do. Um, so, in theory, we can now try to do something weird um, in wiring. So it's just kind of like a little scratch file. So let's do... Um, we have the catalog, so let's do item equals new item. Can I do new item? Aggregate root ID missing. Um, <clears throat> to string from string. Let's do. Oh, well, that's interesting. That wasn't even right uh, what I did before. So <coughs> let's do generate. And that was actually the implementation for generate. So that, would, that was bad. <laughs> this should be. Uh, like this. So testing will catch that when we get to the testing part. All right, so um, constructing, let's see, too few arguments, item. All right, so we need to pass in the item ID, undefined variable item ID. Oh, got to finish. Okay, cannot call without support for large integers. Uh, toast math, big number. <sighs> see. Does Composer require this? Figure out why the messenger keeps crashing. Yeah, it looks like um, missed some stuff from uh, Frank earlier. Um, Essentially, he's saying that the idea behind the message repository is that it gives you full control to do what I'm doing, which is what I want to do, um, which is one of the reasons I think it's pretty, this, this library seems to be pretty awesome because it lets you um, get away with a bunch of this stuff. Um, also, uh, it sounds like there's a PR for unifying the serialization of events in command. Um, there's a link in Astrocast chat for that. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. So, there we go. All right, cool. So this could be something to uh, look forward to at some point. Um, all right, so um, running low on time. Let's see if wiring works now. Okay, awesome. So this isn't actually doing anything terribly interesting at this point. Uh, but I'm okay with that. So let's do, uh, let's dump what item looks like at this point. All right, so um, item has an aggregate root ID. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay, so it's not recording any events. So what we need to do is... Um, do some work on our item itself. So let's do aggregate root behavior. Um, uh, let's look at what the examples look like because I want to try to do this as close to that as possible. Create an aggregate root string. doing that. 
<coughs> sign up ID create. Huh. I'm curious if the intention here from um, <coughs> Frank is that we don't actually end up with a creation event. Um, um, so I'm going to fabricate um, something real quick here. So let's do model catalog. Uh, let's do I'm going to try something that I haven't done before, and I'm actually going to separate the, well, let's just do this, I guess. So events. Um, let's do an import event. Um, I don't know if we're going to need that, but I'm going to use it just for demo purposes. So import. Um, there we go. So imported. Uh, we write them by hand. There we go. This is where the PHP Storm uh, live template stuff is going to be super useful. All right, this property. <coughs> Let's do. Um, uh, name I also want to do something to get rid of the get prefix. All right, so this is pretty straight ahead um, with what um, the docs say. So we're going to have an imported event. Um, it's going to have a name. That's all it's going to have at this point. Um, when it converts it to a payload, it's going to um, use the name create an array that has a name, um, and then when it comes from a payload, it's going to create a new version of itself and assume the payload contains a name. Um, look back at item. Let's do... <coughs> uh, import... So this is a really hacky way to do this. I'm, uh, I'm not actually um, doing anything fancy with the imported uh, function. Like I could actually have said uh, imported with name, <coughs> for example. Um, but I, I just want to get this working. So let's see here. Um, all right, so we're doing the constructor. Um, wiring uh, 
but we're calling the constructor. So this is something I want to see if we can do. Uh, not protect uh, public constructor. Let's see if I can read. Uh, let's see if I can fix that right now. Um, <coughs> Let me look at what the constructor does. If it's just that, um, let's see if I can do override constructor and let's do private as a parent. Hmm. Ah, okay, cool. Um, <coughs> um, I'm actually going to, oh, I can't call, oh, that's interesting. I'm just, I'm just going to take over that behavior. Um, and do it locally. Oh, unless I can't do that. Let's see. Aggregate root behavior. It's private, so I can't do that. All right, so I'm, I'm going to roll back from this um, and uh, to do. I, I, I don't want this to be possible. Um, item equals item import. All right, now we should actually have something here. Ah, <coughs> I still need my item ID first. There we go. Uh, expected aggregate root ID. Hmm. There we go. All right, so Called the undefined method item apply imported. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Um, I'm only a couple minutes over. That's good. So let's do apply imported. Um, <clears throat> need to double check how that works. Apply. Good. Hmm. <laughs> All right, perform another action, apply. <coughs> okay, so it does actually get imported here. So we'll get imported. Event equals event. Now we don't actually need to record this, um, but let's just do it anyway. All right. Uh, so if we look here, we have a name field um, as a part of the imported events. Aggregate root ID. Oh, so this is actually ah storing the whole event. That's why that looked weird. We'll just get the name. Now this might make a little more sense. All right, so name first items aggregate root is the uh, aggregate root ID we created, um, and the recorded events here um, are what we would probably expect. So if we go back to wiring, if everything works as planned, if not, we'll have to pick this up on the next episode. Let's do this catalog, save item, item. And then just for fun, let's DD dollar item again. Huh. Let's go see if we have something in our database. We don't. All right. So something happened <laughs> uh, that failed somehow. Uh, let's do save item. Oh, of course. Uh, DB 
message repository. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> so um, let's do this. Print our um, uh, messages to be serialized, uh, persisted. All right. Silly me. Uh, but this will sh visually show us that we're at least getting this far, hopefully, successfully. Um, and then on the next session, we can actually implement um, the persistence of this. No. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, because I'm DDing that too. That probably would have been good to not do. Uh, dump. Okay, so everything here, um, if we look, <coughs> some of this stuff's actually working. Um, we have our item, um, it has a name, it has an aggregate root ID, uh, aggregate root version is one, um, and the recorded events contains our imported event with the name of first items. Uh, when we see the persist function called, uh, we can see the messages that are passed. So these are the messages that will be persisted. So we have a message object. Uh, the event itself um, is the imported object with the um, first items for the name. Um, then we have the headers. So we have event type. So we see it's converted the type to dot notation with lower, lowercase first letter. So stalker model catalog events imported, uh, the time of the recording, uh, the aggregate root ID. <coughs> ah, thanks for joining, Noxie. <laughs> um, we have aggregate root ID is the item ID object um, that has a UUID uh, value and it has an aggregate root version of one. Um, and where we know that even though it's not persisting it, uh, in reality, it's acting as if it had uh, if we look at the item after we've called persist, we can see that the recorded events have been flushed. So after it passes these events that get uh, recorded, um, when it comes out the other side, it, it doesn't remember them anymore. So I think uh, we're in a pretty good place to pick up um, and finish implementing sort of the guts of um, our, doc, uh, our repository. Um, yeah, basically this part. We need to implement persist and the retrieve uh, functions. So thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm actually sorry you joined right at the end, but um, I'm already a little, little over time here. So um, I'm going to be heading to Laracon US next week. Uh, so I'm not going to be recording and then I'm going to be on holiday the following week. So hopefully um, in, I guess, three weeks now, uh, we will be getting back into the swing of things. Um, thank you all for joining. If you have any questions, uh, hit us up on chat. Uh, we've got a Discord channel. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining.